holy, so holy, and yet he loves us with such deep compassion. Wow, and there is now no more condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And it is true that the enemy feeds us with so many lies and that is the greatest way that he uses to fight us who are the children of God and, and to make us feel this is the end. This is the end for you, my friend. You cannot make it from this point on. You are on your own because the Lord is holy. He cannot accept you. You are dirty. You are filthy. Oh, we. Oui. <laughs> Thank you so much for tuning in and for joining. I can see you, Mr. Mbao. Thank you so much. You are saying, great show, Glashi. If we only understood God's grace and our sonship in him, then, like the prodigal son, we would truly understand the freedom we have in God and just how much he loves us. Indeed, there is no more condemnation for those who are in Christ. He takes us as we are, gives us his ring, and changes the fattest mbuzi for us. That is so true. Thank you so much. It totally, totally... Uh, connects with today's show's topic. Thank you so much for staying tuned. Yes, send me those comments. I'll be ready to read them so that we continue interacting Missouri and also on my Facebook account that is Glashimbudia on Facebook. Make sure Ume fika pale, ume like, ume comment, ume love, ume share. Make sure your friends are tuned as well so that we walk this journey together. So welcome back. No more condemnation. The story of the day is one that is very interesting. <laughs> very interesting. It comes from the book of John chapter 8. And well, it's one that can totally re we can totally relate with. We may not be adulterers. We may not be like that woman that we're going to read about. But we are uh, in a position where the devil is really fighting against us. Sawa, sawa. And he does not want anything good coming our way. But who is Jesus? Huh? Let us read and see what happened. But before we read it, let me give you a backstory. Kidogo to ilitu fike apo. So now, Jesus uh, had not quite gotten into his ministry. Kabisa. So people were not used to him yet. Sawa, sawa. And of course, they never got to, used to him, Bakamusho, <laughs> because they thought he was a false prophet. He was blasphem blasphemous against God. And they were, you know, they thought they, he was not following the law as they wanted him to. Now, we are talking about the Pharisees and the scribes or the teachers of the law. And the problem started when Jesus healed a certain person on a Sabbath. We will not look an, into that right now. But I'm trying to show you where all this is coming from, Sawa. So, fast forward, the Israelites were celebrating what we call the Feast of the Tabernacles. They used to celebrate this to remind themselves of their journey in the wilderness. And so, uh, they used to go to the temple and feast and get the law read out to them, on a summer, on a manakula, and all that, Sawa, Sawa. And so, Jesus' brothers told him, uh, you cannot start out working in, in secret if you want people to know you. Make sure and they were saying this because they too did not believe in him. So And uh, so, he told them his time had not come yet. Okay, what time was he talking about? What time was he talking about? We'll get to see. But then uh, he decided to go anyway and he went to the temple and there he started teaching and, 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 you know, passing on the message about who sent him. You know, telling everybody that he was being obedient to the one who sent him. You know, if he had come by himself, he would be bringing glory to himself or making himself known. But now, he was making he who sent him known to the people. Sawa, sawa. And he was also reading out to them, Mulisama nili ponyana on a Sabbath. You guys follow the law of Moses. Okay? But then, you are the same people who circumcise your boys when they are eight days old. 
right? That is according to the law. So what happens if this baby boy's eighth day is on a Sabbath? If you don't circumcise him, won't you be going against the law? So what is it that was so wrong about me healing on a Sabbath? And so the Pharisees were angry. They would say, why is he so against the law? Or against the Pharisees, or they felt, ah, kuna vile anawashinda, eh? <laughs> and so, the crowd, just like today, people have a lot to say. Kuna nyon kuna sema, ah, well, um, say he's good, he's good, vile anawangea. The others were like, hey, 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 he is blasphemous, he is not okay, that is so bad. That is according to the book of John chapter 7. Wengine wana sema, who is trying to kill him? Because the Pharisees were actually trying to kill him. Now, one of the Pharisees' name was Nicodemus, and he had met Jesus earlier. So he had had an encounter with him, and it was pleasant, it was beautiful. He got to learn how you get born again. Sour, sour. And so, these Pharisees now, in this area, sent the guards of the temple to go and capture Jesus. Okay? So, when they got there, uh, they could not hold him. Why? Because his time had not come yet. So far, so good. To Meleona. And so they were like, aha, uh -huh. so he has deceived you also. Eh? Yani, because the guards were like, eh, the stories he's telling are so good. He, you should listen to what he's saying. So he has deceived you also. So Nicodemus, one of the Pharisees, asked his fellow men, is it okay? Is it okay to condemn a person? without having him plead his case. So fine. They started plotting ways that they were going to trap Jesus and condemn him so that he can be seen as a very bad person. I hope to mele wana mpaka hapo. That is what now brings us to John chapter 8, uh, where we are told, uh, but Jesus went to, mount, uh, to the Mount of Olives. Well, alikuwa ametoka wapi? <laughs> alikuwa ametoka wapi? Verse 53 of John chapter 7 in Asema, they all went home. Now after the feast of the tabernacles, they all went home. But Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. Verse 2. At dawn, he appeared again in the temple courts where all the people gathered around him and sat down to teach them. The teachers of the law and the Pharisees brought in a woman caught in adultery. They made her stand before the group and said to Jesus, Teacher, this woman was caught in the act of adultery. In the law, Moses commanded us to stone such women. Now, what do you say? What do you say? They were using this question as a trap in order to have a basis for accusing him. So far, to Melewa Kwanini, now they were asking this question. It's because they wanted to trap him and have a basis of accusing him. Okay? But Jesus bent down and started to write on the ground with his finger. When they kept on questioning him, he straightened up and said to them, let any one of you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. Hey, verse 8. Again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground. Verse 9. At this, those who heard, okay, those who heard began to walk away one at a time, the older ones first, uh, until only Jesus was left with the woman still standing there. Jesus straightened up and asked her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? And on to verse 11, she said, No one, sir, she said. So, neither, uh, then neither do I condemn you, Jesus declared. Go now and live your life of sin, or go now and sin no more. <laughs> now, these Pharisees and the scribes, I think we were feeling so justified and, and, and so purified, you know, because they were following the law to the latter. We caught this woman in the act of adultery. Now, I believe if they caught her in the act, well, then she was not appropriately dressed. Okay? So, Alishi Kwatu, Akatolewa Kwanyumba, Mbiu Mbiu Mbiu, all the way to where Jesus was. 
Okay? So first of all, there is so much shame that is happening around here for this woman. She was ashamed. Okay? Because now, umeletwa hadharani in front of everyone. And, and uh, hey, people love such stories. <laughs> I don't know whether you have been in such a situation. Mtu analetwa tu. Kuna chaos. People love chaos. People love chaos. And those people back then were not any different. And so it was such a... Mm, hey, you know, she was brought there. I was there. They wanted to be the first to go tell that story. And so for this woman... It would be traumatic. It was terrible. Sawa, sawa, being brought in front of Jesus and every eye on her. And then there are these Pharisees who are like, eh, hey, sasa. According to the law of Moses, such women who are caught in adultery are supposed to be stoned to death. Yes, they had such barbaric, uh, the, I mean, ideas of, of punishing people. You know, imagine being stoned to death until you're gone. I think that, that's so painful. But anyway, that was how they were going to do it because that was the law of Moses. Now, dear viewer, allow me to show you just a little bit of how this goes deep. These laws that Moses wrote or Moses gave were laws given to him by God himself. The same man they were bringing the woman to. So he knew the law. Vizuri Sana, he's the one who had given it anyway. Jesus is God. And therefore, as they were bringing the woman to him and telling him about the law, he had already known whatever it was they were stating. Sawa, sawa. So the same finger that had written those laws or guided Moses to write them was the same finger he used to draw Hapochini. We are not quite sure what he had written. Sawa, sawa. But now, he looked at them and told them, let him or any one of you without sin be the first to cast that stone. Now, I think that revived in them or awoke or awakened in them <laughs> a certain uh, conscience that was dead or asleep. They had forgotten totally that they were human and that they would sin and that they were actually sinners. And therefore, even as Jesus was telling them, he was trying to remind them that they too could be in that woman's shoes if she had any. <laughs> but, if, you know, uh, you could have been in her position. And for you to get the depth of this whole story, I would like us to put ourselves in the shoes of that woman 